Man, I love being in church this morning. Does anybody else love being in church this morning? Amen. Amen. So before we started worshiping today, I wanted to explain a little bit about the song Egypt. We, we've sung it a couple uh, months now, and the song starts out, I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release, O Yahweh. The song is assimilating the Jewish people leaving Egypt and being brought into the promised land of Israel. And the song assimilates that to us when we are in our sin. God is making a way for us, the exodus of our heart, to leave the sin and cling to him and be delivered to him in heaven someday in the land that is promised to us. And as we worship this morning, I hope and pray that everybody's hearts can be softened to the message this, that's going to come today and that we can worship in one true unity this morning. Is anybody excited to worship this morning? Anybody more excited to worship than to be in church? That was a test. You all passed. <laughs> Let's stand and sing, All Creatures of Our God and King.
come out of our sin and into a presence with God. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing feeling. I pray that for all of you.
Good to see everybody here. You guys sound amazing. So I just want to start this morning by saying, you know, I was lulled into a false sense of security last week. <laughs> it was beautiful last weekend, and uh, it was in the 50s, and I'm digging it. I'm walking around town, literally walking, and then somebody turned the air conditioning back on. We need to get in touch with somebody and have them turn the heat back up just a little bit. I would appreciate that. Uh, if this is your first time, if this is your first time in a long time, I'm Pastor Jose. I'm the associate youth pastor here at Woodland Bible Church. Uh, on the inside of your bulletin, if this is your first time on the far right here, if you would fill that out, drop it off in the bo uh, on the box in the foyer. Uh, we would love to have a record of your attendance. And for those who call Woodland home, uh, the box is where we drop our tithes and offerings, but if you're a guest, we just want you to drop you the connection card off because we want a chance to get to meet you and welcome you here this morning. Uh, tonight, we have a middle school uh, meeting again this week at 4 o'clock. We are starting a new series called Limited Edition and how being uh, yourself and you are unique, made in the image of God, and that is for the middle school ministry, so if you're be in the grades of 6th through 8th grade, make sure you're here for that at 4 o'clock. At 6.15 tonight, high school ministry will be meeting as well, so make sure you're here for that in 9th through 12th grade. Wednesday, uh, Awanas is meeting at 6 o'clock at the common area at the high school, so if you're kindergarten through 8th grade, make sure you're a part of that. We're winding up the Awana season. This is our last week, and then... Uh, the ne next week, we have our award ceremony. So Awanas is coming to a close for this year. So make sure that your kids, that you're getting your verses done and, and signed off. And I was a part of Awanas growing up. I have all the awards. So, and I know the importance of scripture memory from Awanas. So make sure you, you uh, get that done. Uh, FCA is this Wednesday as well. As we're also wrapping up the FCA uh, school year as well. So... Uh, 9th through 12th grade, we're meeting at the Knable House. Uh, we're playing cards for our game, so make sure you're here for that in a time of devotion and a time of just being together. I uh, want to thank everybody that was a part of the special screening for Life Mark on Thursday. We were able to raise $4,000 for the Crisis Pregnancy Center, which is uh, great. Yeah. It was a good time. It was a great movie. We have the movie in our library now, so if you would like to check that out and rewatch it or watch it for the first time, uh, it was a very powerful, very impactful movie. And if you were not a part of it, if you were not there Thursday night at the screening, uh, but you would still like to donate, see Pastor Wayne about that. He would love to talk to you more about the Crisis Pregnancy Center and their ministry and what they're doing here in northern Minnesota. Uh, today, after the service, there is a baby shower for uh, baby Madison, uh, so make sure that you come by for that. Light lunch will be provided. And October 22nd, we have our quarterly business meeting coming up. So if you're a member of the church, uh, make sure you're here for that. If you're not a member of the church, still show up because we're going to be discussing the business of the church itself and things that are going on with the building and ministry. So make sure that you're here and being a part of that as well. Our, on the 29th, we have our community worship night. Uh, if you would like to come together as a community and just lift up the name of God through song and prayer, let, be a part of this because there's nothing more powerful than prayer and worship. So make sure you're here being a part of that and bring a potluck goodie that I was specifically told to mention. But yeah, be a part of that. It's a great time of coming together as a community to lift up God's name on a, on a Saturday night. Also, we have our church work day coming up, May 5th and 6th. There's more information about that out on the welcome desk, so make sure that you stop by that and check that out And as we go down to Oak Hills to work on a project that they have coming up as well. And as always, make sure that you like the Facebook page and uh, uh, for uh, not late-breaking announcements, things that are coming up that are not in the bulletin, but make sure you're a part, you're a part of that as well. And I'll welcome the worship team back up. To expand a little bit on that April 29th um, worship night, I want to challenge everybody to take this out of their bulletin and bring it home. 
find somebody to give it to. We want to worship with everybody that we can find to worship with. We want to spread the word of God through our worship. And it's a prelude to the concert in the park, uh, raising some funds for that. So if you want any more information on that, come speak with me or Nancy Fisher or Anna Friesner if you've got time. Otherwise, come on the 29th. We would love to worship with you. And with that, let's keep worshiping. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Good morning. I'm not sure what all, is this your stuff? You have no idea what this is. I got like seven pieces of candy up here. I don't know if it's because I'm the candy man or what the deal is, but anyway, um, are they for me? Or for whoever wants to come up here and preach, then they can have the candy. That's the deal, right? Do I have any takers? Anyway, I'm so glad that you're here today, so glad that you came back, even after last week. Last week was a great, an awesome service celebrating our Lord's resurrection, and today we get the opportunity once again to worship together and to serve the Lord today here on his day. And we have a special privilege today. Um, our church supports missions. We are a missions-minded church, and we support like 16 different missionary families. But today we have the privilege of having with us a new missionary family that's raising support to go to the mission field. Um, Dave and, I've been saying Dan all morning, that's why I had to make sure I said Dave instead of Dan. Dave and Deb Stinnell are here with us. They're raising support to be missionaries with Bridges International, um, a ministry that uh, reaches international students, a lot like what Randall Harms does that we support. Uh, they're doing this at Arizona State University, and I would like for you to welcome them today to our church to present their ministry to us and to share with us from God's Word. Let's give them a hand and ask Dave to come up here and share today. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank the church for having us come here. Uh, thank you, Pastor Wayne. And uh, it's just a privilege to be here. Uh, we love the War Road community. We've had a camper over at the point for a few years now. And uh, we just, uh, we haven't made it to this church, but I, I, I think we'll be we showing up if we're in the area from now on. So. Uh, you have a beautiful uh, auditorium here and a beautiful congregation. So uh, it's really a, a privilege to be here. And like the pastor said, uh, the singing was tremendous being up in the front here. It was uh, fantastic. And uh, we have a connection here with uh, Don and Rob Crow, And uh, uh, they're in the back there. I see them. Hi. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Abraham and his journey. And uh, Don and Rob and Deb and I, we kind of made the same journey about 15 years ago. We moved up to this area. We were from Grand Rapids area, Hill City area. And we moved up here and uh, we've enjoyed it. So we've been here. We live in Greenbush, uh, Minnesota. I've been a... Uh, uh, special ed teacher in Greenbush for uh, 16 years and Deb worked as a school social worker too. So today I want to talk about, uh, uh, about the call of God on your lives and obeying that call. Uh, God can speak to us in many ways. It's important that we pray and seek his answers and some of the ways that God can speak to us of course, probably one of the most important ways is the Bible and uh, the Word of God. It's God's Word. It doesn't change, and it's there for all of us. And uh, another way God can speak is through wise counsel from elders or just from other people, uh, spiritually mature people. Uh, you can get advice, and uh, God, God can speak to you that way. You can, number three, you can also hear God by the sense of peace he gives you in a situation. Or if you don't have peace in a situation. And this depends on prayer. You need prayer to, to, to uh, work out this, uh, this process. God can also close the doors or open your doors to show you his will. All right, We think of Paul. Uh, he, was, he wanted to go to Asia to preach. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit, would not allow him to, to go to, uh, to Asia. And it just wouldn't, wouldn't, didn't happen for him. And uh, so I'm sure you've, you've had open or closed doors at times also. Uh, you can hear his small voice through the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, God can speak to us. He can also uh, communicate with us through visions and dreams. And uh, to hear from God, 
it's important that we are right with God, walking in his ways, and that you humbly seek his will. At first, God might, might point out some sin in your life or things we need to change. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We also must be willing to listen to God. If, we, if we're seeking his will, we, we, we need to do what, what God says. Uh, Psalm 95.8 Today, if you hear your, his voice, do not harden your hearts. So, uh, I have an example of this, uh, and I, you probably can relate, or I hope you can relate to this. Uh, certain times, my wife Deb and I, we will uh, disagree on things. Uh, some would say we have an argument, okay? Uh, when this happens, instead of handling the situation correctly, Matthew 5.23 says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and remember your brother or your wife has something against you, first go and reconcile to your brother or wife, and then come and offer your gift. Uh, well, uh, sometimes I say to myself, I'm not ready to uh, do this. I know I'm supposed to, but, you know, I, I just have this, mm, maybe, or disagreement. And uh, so, uh, but I want to follow after God, so maybe I'll say, okay, God, I, I want to read my Bible instead. So I have a, try to have a quiet time. And what happens? Uh, Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, In your anger, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And so, when I try to read the Bible, it's like a closed book. Uh, I just can't get anything out of it. It's just amazing. If I have something against my wife, uh, this happens. And maybe you can relate to that too. And uh, we need to get everything right with God. And when we do get right with God, the Bible is just a joy to read, and the Bible speaks to us again. And so, so uh, fortunately for God, God is a loving God, and he forgives us. And Jesus will, uh, if we confess our sins, he will uh, bring us right with God again. So he cares for us, he loves us, and he understands. So today I'd like to read uh, Genesis, uh, in Genesis 11, 32, 31 and 32, and chapter 12, 1 through 10. So Genesis 11, 31 and 32, and then continuing on chapter 12, 1 through 10. So Terah took his son Abram, which will be, he will be named Abraham in the future. I'll probably call him both ways here, but Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they sent out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. Canaan would be, become the Israel. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. So this was kind of a transition. They were going to go eventually to Canaan, uh, but they settled in Haran. Now the call of Abraham, chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. 
Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and I on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued toward the negative. Verse 10, now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. So we see that uh, Terah uh, brought, brought the people, uh, set out for Canaan and stopped halfway and they settled there and they developed roots, uh, obtained wealth, and, uh, but then the Lord called Abram to leave this country and move his household to the land God would show them. So Abraham obeyed. He did not know for sure where he was going. Okay? Uh, he probably didn't have a map, and I know he didn't have a cell phone at the time. And, uh, so he didn't know where he was going. So it took faith to, uh, to obey God. Uh, if I was going to do this, or maybe you can relate to this, uh, we like to know the details of where we're going, or I like to know the plan. Where am I going to stay? What am I going to do? How far am I going to go? And all these plans. Uh, where will we end up? Okay, we all like to know these details, but God doesn't always reveal these to us, does he? He wants us to trust him. So Abraham is showing us what real faith is. He trusted God even though he didn't know the details. Real faith, real faith is trusting God even though your finances or your bank account might be at zero. That's like the uh, widow who gave all that she had in the temple. And Jesus commended her for her faith. Then in verse 3, the Lord said he would bless him and all the peoples of the earth would be blessed. Well, what does this mean? Uh, God was establishing Abram, who would eventually be called a Abraham and Sarah, and was going to make Abra Abraham the father of the Jewish nation. And through this nation... Through the buildup of this nation and this people, he would send his son, Jesus Christ, to save the world. So yes, Abraham would not only be the father of the Jewish nation, but he would be our father also. The blessings of Jesus Christ would come through Abraham and through Jesus to us. So we are part of that blessing also. So that should give us great comfort. And we're, we're special people to God. All right, then moving on, when God appeared to Abram and told him he would give him the land, verse 7, Abram built an altar to the Lord to worship. And I believe to remember what the Lord had done for him. And uh, this is uh, an important point. Uh, we are people that tend to forget things and uh, I think we need memorials also. God wants us to set up memorials that we can remember. Uh, in Joshua 4, when the Israelites were going to cross 
the river, God separated the river, the people went through to the promised land, and Joshua was commanded to pile up stones in, as a remembrance of this great deliverance or this great miracle. And uh, I want you to encourage you to do the same things in your life. Setting up stones in the yard or a plaque on the wall or something, uh, remembrance of what God has done for you. Because in the years that pass, we, we naturally we tend to forget. And uh, maybe, maybe this is a prayer journal that you keep or just a journal of answered prayers of things that uh, uh, God has done for you. Uh, this, this encourages us in our faith, and it also encourages uh, uh, kids, grandkids, great-grandkids. They can, they can read about things that God did for you. And I would also say uh, it's good for a church to journal, journal what God has done in the development of a church, too. It's a tremendous thing that, that could be done. I heard of one person who had written down 4,000 prayers that had been answered in their lifetime. Now, what a testimony to God that, that is. So, so now what happens when Abraham obeys God and comes to the promised land? I included verse 10 because it says that there was a famine in the land. Abraham had, or Abram had to go down to Egypt because this, the famine was so severe. Do you suppose he questioned God? God, why did you bring me to this land? There's a terrible famine going on. Could he have been questioned himself? God, did I hear you right when you told me to go to Canaan? Did I hear you or... Did I make a mistake? I know those thoughts would run through my mind. And uh, this, this brings up an important principle. Uh, when you set out to do God's will, many times you will run into difficulty as you start to do God's will. Uh, this happens many times in the Bible. An example would be, uh, Mark 4, 35 to 31. Jesus suggests to the disciples that they go over to the other side of the lake in a boat. And when they do, when they obey him and do God's will, a tremendous squall comes up, a great storm. And uh, who suggested this trip? Jesus. And they obeyed and difficult things happened. So uh, this is a, just an important lesson for me to learn. Uh, when I was younger and I was seeking out God, seeking out the will for my life in different areas, you know, sometimes I would make a decision and difficult things would happen, and I would think that I had missed God's call, that I had uh, uh, not done the will of the Lord. Now I need to know, now I, now I know that there's difficulties can occur, and I hope this helps you also. You've got to continue to pray and continue to seek, seek God. So to sum things up, uh, number one, the call of God, to hear God, it's important that you have a right relationship with God. Just like when I'm not right with my wife, the Bible does not speak to me. Uh, so I have to be right with God, or we have to be right with God. Number two, that you obey God and have faith that he will take care of you. I mean, we can hear God, but if we don't obey him, uh, then, we're, then we're not glorifying him. Number three, expect to face difficulties when you begin to obey God. Expect this to happen. Don't, don't question, uh, but continue to seek his will. And the, the fourth thing, set up a memorial. Set up memorials or a praise journal 
or a rem remembrance that you can remember the times that God spoke to you, the kind, times that God moved you to do. He moved in, in great ways, in small ways, big ways. And uh, in fact, I'm, uh, I'm not big on technology, but I decided to uh, try technology in, in Google Docs. I have answers to prayer, so I'm going to keep that, see if that works now for me. So. Uh, so uh, uh, now my wife, Deb, is going to come up, and uh, we're going to share a little bit about our ministry now. So. Yeah, so we'll go a little bit back and forth here. Um, as Dave said, we're from Greenbush. We moved up here several years ago, and... Um, I know that tomorrow our robotics team, which is my favorite team, my favorite sports team in Greenbush, um, is robotics. Our daughter used to be on it. Our, all of our kids have graduated. And um, so our team is going with your team, with Team Fred. So how exciting. They're going to Worlds tomorrow. So that's exciting. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about our calling on our life. Um, we are not spiritual warriors like Abraham. We are just ordinary people trying to do God's will. And God has called us about two years ago, you never would have thought we were going to be doing this. Um, but then different things happen. We'll explain some of that. Um, we're going to be working with Bridges International, which is a ministry of crew, Campus Crusade for Christ. Um, and it's in the United States, it's called crew. Um, Bridges is a ministry under Campus Crusade that focuses on international students. So every year there's a million international students that come to the United States. And we want to reach them while they're here. 30 or 60 to 70 percent of them come from countries where the gospel is not presented, where um, Christianity is repressed or persecuted. And so we want to reach them while they're here. We have a free access to them. And, and they have needs when they come here. And we have a video that we're going to show in a, a few seconds to kind of show some of the needs of international students. Um, so the world is coming to our campuses, and we want to reach them with the gospel. Um, as Dave mentioned, he was a teacher. I was the school social worker. And um, yeah, now God has called us into something different. So. We'll show the video. God calls us to make disciples in every nation. And God has brought students from every nation here. They come to learn. One day they'll lead. But it's hard living away from home. Internationals are often isolated, overwhelmed. Their experiences here travel home with them. Many are far from God, but he has gathered them close to you. What if you could impact the leaders of tomorrow today? Or bring God's light to the nations in your own city? Provide a home away from home. The unreached are within arm's reach. for just a short time. But you can make a lasting difference. One person can change a nation. The world is waiting on a campus nearby. The nations here now. All right, 
So yeah, that I love that video. It kind of sums up what what we want to do and build relationships with students from different countries. And uh, we can go. Yep, the next slide. Uh, our calling. Uh, we look back. Probably started uh, really in, intensely about three years ago. Uh, our youngest daughter is on the right there, and her name is Sarah. And three years ago, we had a foreign exchange student come, and Diana is on the left, and she came from China. And uh, she was just a sweet, gentle, kind, spirited, loving girl. And those two hit it off like sisters right away. And uh, she just wanted to learn about our customs, our way of life, and uh, we bought her a Bible that had Chinese and English side by side, and, and uh, so we had family devotions with her, and uh, uh, eventually she prayed to receive Christ, and uh, we just pray. Uh, she's back in China now, and there's not much uh, 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 discipleship for her. We just pray that uh, she could get some disi discipleship. And so we look back, and, <clears throat> and God was just, just working on our hearts right then through this relationship with Diana. And then we have, we have three children. Uh, our oldest son, he was working for crew in East Asia. And during COVID, he was sent back to the United States. And uh, he was uh, assigned to the University of Illinois in Champaign uh, as working there. And he's was working with bridges, and that's kind of where we found out about bridges, which works with the international students. So, so I kind of started praying about uh, uh, maybe working with bridges, and then uh, eventually Nathan uh, got married, and his, his wife is from East Asia, and so for COVID, they had to get married in Thailand. They couldn't travel uh, anywhere. Uh, so, so they had to uh, get married in Thailand. So we flew to Thailand and uh, were able to see his wedding at 22 hours in the air to, to go there. And <laughs> so, uh, but on the way back, on the way back, uh, we were on our last flight. And it was a year ago last August. And uh, we were flying from Chicago to uh, Fargo, our last flight. And uh, the end of August, there was quite a few uh, college students on the plane, and they had a lot of energy. They were talking and, and getting on. And uh, I noticed there was a, a guy across the aisle from us, and he was real quiet, real, didn't say anything, real tense, nervous, looked stressed. And so when the plane landed, uh, we got up in the aisle to leave, and he got up beside us, and he asked us, would you help me with the baggage claim? And we said, sure, broke the ice. We said, sure, yeah, we can help you. And we started talking with him, and we found out he was an international student coming to the United States. He was from uh, uh, the Middle East and was going to go to NDSU. And so we helped him, and, and uh, he didn't know a single person coming over, and, and so, uh, it was just a confirmation, my prayers, I had been praying about this, and just a confirmation that God was saying, yeah, you can work with these students, they're, they're hungry and they're, they're out there. So it was just a blessing. So yeah, as Dave said, um, Diana was a big part of our um, calling. Um, Diana actually, incidentally, was on the robotics team with our daughter, so <laughs> another robotics connection. Um, the next slide shows a picture of Mike. Mike is another person who is a part of our story. Mike came, must be six years ago now, to the United States as a exchange, or an international student, went to the University of Illinois, and the very first week on campus, different organizations have tables set up, you know, so that you can go to an activity fair and find out what you can get involved with and how you can connect on campus. And Mike really connected with the people at the Bridges table. And so he started going to all their meetings. And he became part of their leadership. Now, Mike is not a Christian. 
and that doesn't matter. Um, he was helping plan food, and he likes to cook, so he's helping plan food and organizing different things. Um, a year and a half being part of Bridges, he had seeds of God planted in his life through all the staff and through the other students. Um, a year and a half later, he signed up to go on a missions trip, and they were going to go to Guatemala. And what they were going to do was called the Filters of Hope Ministry, where they were bringing something like a five-gallon bucket that family, they could give to families. The families could fill it with water, and then it would filter clean drinking water for them. So for families that didn't have access to a well or any other form of clean drinking water, so then they could give this to the families. Well, the very first day they got there, and somebody broke into their van and stole the bag of one of the girls on the trip, and she was from Asia. In the bag was her computer, her phone, and her passport. So a traveler's worst nightmare, losing that passport. She, so she was in Guatemala, lost her passport, and in her passport would have been her visa to give her permission to be in the United States. So she lost two important documents that she needed to get back to the United States. So the Bridges team, they didn't know what they were going to do, how they were going to get her back. So that started a series of phone calls to different embassies to try to figure out what they're going to do. Um, finally, the, like a couple days before they were supposed to come back, they, it, it was looking impossible. They got a hold of the right embassy in Asia, but they said, well, we can't get you a passport in time. So the plan was they were going to leave her behind, and they were going to leave a Bridges staff person with her so she wasn't alone. But Mike said in the meantime, they did the ministry. They were going to families, and they would give them the filters, and they'd pray for these families. And the families would turn around and say, well, how can we pray for you guys? And they'd say, well, you know, here's this passport situation. If you could pray about this, that would be great. Um, Mike said the day before they were supposed to come back, they got a phone call from a United States senator. He doesn't know which one. Um, and the senator said, I've heard your plight. I'm sending documentation to allow her on that plane in Guatemala. And when you get back to the United States, I will have a representative at that gate in Chicago that will walk her through customs. So she got into the United States without her, com without her um, passport or her visa. And Mike said when he saw God do this impossible thing, he knew God was real. And so he gave his life to the Lord. So this tragedy turned into a triumph. And uh, so then that was the end of his sophomore year. And his junior year and senior year, he's just growing in the Lord. You know, he's growing in the word. He's going to all the Bible studies and soaking in God's word. And um, the intersection with us is his senior year is the, son, the year that our son was sent home from crew with crew um, to work on the University of Illinois campus. And so our son worked with him that last year, his senior year. Um, Mike graduated. And he was feeling called by God to do an internship with, with Bridges. So you can do an internship for one or two years with crew. And so Mike wanted to do an internship. And so he was looking for people to support him. So our son gave him our name. And so we had a phone conversation with him one day. We were having a video conversation as we were driving in the car. And we supported Mike then his um, year. Uh, a whole year, a year ago. And now, last June, Dave and I um, resigned from our job so that we could um, raise support full time. And we had to go to a training in Florida, and Mike was there. Mike is joining staff full time now with Bridges. And so we were there, we got to have training together. And uh, yeah, it's just cool to see you know, what Mike did, and that's kind of exemplifies what we want to have happen with students. Mike is developing a heart in Florida last June. He got a phone call that one of his friends back in Asia had committed suicide. And he's just developing a heart for wanting to um, go back and minister to his friends. He said, I don't want to ever have to get a phone call like that again. I want to give my friends the hope that he found in Jesus Christ. So... So uh, after this, uh, after some prayer, uh, we decided to uh, apply to Bridges. And uh, Bridges gave us a list of 10 high need campuses that they needed workers in. And uh, uh, examples were out in uh, the East Coast, the West Coast colleges, 
uh, some Texas colleges, Arizona State, and uh, so we started praying about it, and then uh, we looked at the schools, and I said, okay, Deb, don't, don't tell me. Let's just look at these. You pick a college, and I'll pick a college, and we'll see uh, what turns out. And uh, so then we did, and we both picked Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. And uh, Tempe is one of the biggest, or Arizona State is one of the biggest colleges in the United States. There's 77,000 students roughly there. And uh, there's 100, or no, 15,000 international students. So there's a, a large population. And uh, they do have some workers there. And uh, there's about seven workers, some are part-time. So we will be joining a team there to, to work. And uh, there's 156 uh, countries uh, represented in, uh, on the campus, so. So we have um, some information. We have a table will be out in the lobby. Uh, what we need is we are hoping to be able to go by August, which would mean we would need to have our support in place by the end of June. And that will take God to do that. And um, we don't know who God is asking to join our team. Um, it's kind of like a uh, scavenger hunt or a treasure hunt that we're going on here. Um, we just ask, we, want, we just want to meet with people. We don't want to just like, we, we, want, we want to we help people who have a heart for missions have a place that they can feel that they're involved in. And so we want to have a deeper relationship with people that are supporting us. Um, we want to be able to call and we send prayer letters back saying what's going on, but we want to also get to know people. And so we would love to meet with you guys individually, as families, as individuals, um, to show you the vital part that you could be playing in this ministry. If you have a heart for sharing the gospel and you want to reach some of the three billion people in the world that have never heard of the gospel. Some of the students that come to our campuses, they'll say to them, oh, do you know Jesus? And they'll say, oh, does he live in my building? I mean, they have no clue. They've never heard of Jesus. And so we want to be there and plant these seeds like Mike in Mike's life. And so um, we have a couple different, we have a flyer out at our table. And we have some cards that you can, you can scan a QR code that you can give us your information where we could reach you. Um, you can fill out a card, the bottom part of the card, and tear that off. Um, we also have a web, so on here, you can scan here to, to reach, to give us your information. And down here is our website. We have a, um, you can read a little bit more about us. We created this website because it's a really good way for, let's say, we have a partner that that says, oh, well, my brother might be interested. Well, they instead of having them call their brother to explain who we are, they can just send them our website. And it's just a good way to introduce us to people. So um, yeah, so there's some different things that we're looking for. We need people to connect with. Um, you might be, you, we, need, we need financial partners and we pre need prayer partners. In order to go, we do have to have um, people that are giving on a monthly or yearly basis that say they will commit to an ongoing basis. Um, and so we're just trusting God to provide for all that we need. And yeah, and um, the next slide, I think, the next one after that, there you go. There's, there's another, um, there's a cell phone number too that for those of you online, if you're not here and don't have access to the QR code and stuff, um, so please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to get to know people. And, you know, like Dave said, we have a camper here, and it's still here this summer, and we're going to keep it here for the year and maybe come back some in next summer. And I think we're site 169, so stop by. <laughs> if it's, we're there, we'll... It's between the swimming pool and the lake in the backside there. <laughs> Thank you. And if they're not there, feel free to stay in their camper. 
I, no, I don't. You have to ask them about that. I would like to ask Dave and Deb if they would just go back to their table, and uh, we're going to receive a special love offering for them. If they can just go to their table, and you can meet with them there at their table uh, and talk with them specifically after we dismiss. But we're going to receive a special offering for them to help them, um, encourage them. I don't know exactly where you are in your support level. What percentage are you at now? About 56%. So they got about 44% more needed. Uh, so that gives you a way to pray for them in their ministry. Uh, guys, just come on forward. And uh, I'm going to pray and then receive an offering for them. And then maybe uh, halfway through this, we'll invite the uh, praise team up to help us in our closing song. Let's pray for them in their ministry. Father, once again, I just thank you and praise you for the privilege that You've given us to be involved in world evangelism, Lord, through the missions efforts that we support and the missionaries. And God, you've blessed our church, I believe, as a direct result of our involvement with sharing the gospel uh, around the world for the cause of Christ. And Father, we pray for Deb and, and Dave and their ministry and your calling upon their life to reach international students, Lord, that you're sending and bringing to our country uh, with the opportunity for us to be able to share Christ with them so that they can take that back to their countries and share it with their people. And Father, I just pray that you would meet the needs of Dave and Deb and thank you for their willingness to follow you in this venture. And uh, God, that you would just meet their needs, uh, help them to raise this support that's needed to do this ministry at Arizona State. I pray even uh, this next year as uh, you are already bringing and planning to bring new students to that ministry, that God, that they would be a, a part of pouring their lives into them so that we might see some of them, like Mike, trust you as their personal Savior and then get involved in sharing you with others. So, Father, I pray that you'd bless this gift that we're receiving and help them to use it to further the gospel and the ministry that you've given them. And we'll be careful to thank you and praise you for all this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. God bless as you give. It truly is a blessing to know that God has called people into the missions field to go and do his work. And as members and attenders of Woodland, we can support them in what they do. Um, so I encourage you to give the best you can. Um, we're going to start singing our closing song right now. Um, please remain seated as we start singing. Um, but worship with us. Shadow. 
pray it's Christ. You are dismissed. Oh, that's not...